the concept of price elasticity of demand. We're going to define PED, talk about the formula used for calculating the price elasticity of demand between two prices, and we'll interpret the possible outcomes of that calculation by looking at the different possible values of price elasticity of demand for a good between two prices. In the second part of this lesson, we'll talk about the different determinants of PED and come to some conclusions about why demand for certain goods might be relatively elastic or relatively inelastic. We've got a couple of examples of goods that we'll be looking at in this lesson today. We're going to be comparing the demand for McDonald's Big Mac hamburgers, which we can see on the top here, and the demand for gasoline. We'll come back to these graphs in just a minute. Let's first go over to the left here and talk about the definition of this important microeconomic concept. PED, price elasticity of demand. This is the first type of elasticity that we'll be covering in our unit on elasticities. PED refers to the responsiveness of consumers to a change in the price of a good or service. This is the most simple definition of price elasticity of demand, but there is a way to quantify the responsiveness of consumers, and that's what the PED formula does for us. The price elasticity of demand formula may look familiar to those of you who have studied linear demand and supply equations. It is measuring the percentage change in quantity of a good divided by the percentage change in the price of the good following a price change. Now you may think, well, that is the B variable in a demand equation, but you would be wrong because if you recall, the B variable in a demand equation measured simply the change in quantity divided by the change in price. The very important distinction here is that PED measures the percentage change in the quantity demanded divided by the percentage change in the price of a good when the price of a good increases or decreases. Now if you aren't given percentage changes in price and quantity then you might have to calculate percentage changes in price and quantity and there are a couple of ways you can do this. There's a simple way which simply takes the new quantity which I'll call Q2 resulting from a price change subtracts the original quantity which I'll call Q1 and divides it by the original quantity of Q1. That will give you the percent change in quantity demanded. Then we can divide that whole result by the percentage change in price, which takes the new price, subtracts the original price, and divides it by the original price. Now some of you may be in a class that requires you to understand what's called the midpoint method. The midpoint method of calculating PED. The midpoint method gives us a more accurate result when we calculate the price elasticity of demand between two prices. The midpoint method looks quite similar to the regular method of calculating PED, except we replace the Q and the P with the average quantity and the average price between Q1 and Q2 and between P1 and P2. So let's put the midpoint method down here, just in case this is something you're required to know for calculating PED. The midpoint method looks at this. We take Q2, the new quantity, minus the old quantity, and divide it by the average of the old quantity and the new quantity, which would be Q1 plus Q2 divided by 2. This is going to give us a more accurate percent change in quantity, regardless of whether we look at the price increasing or the price decreasing. We then do the same thing for the denominator in our formula. So we do P2 minus P1 divided by the average of P2 and P1. So that would be P1 plus P2 divided by 2. So over here, this should be a Q1. This is what's called the midpoint method. In my particular classes, we do not have to use this slightly more complex method. But if you are in a class that requires the midpoint method, keep in mind that the only difference is that when calculating the percent change in quantity and price, instead of looking at just the original quantity, we look at the average quantities between the old quantity and the new quantity. And instead of looking at the original price in our denominator, we look at the average price between P1 and P2. All right, let's get over to our examples here. And we're going to actually practice calculating PED for Big Macs and for gasoline between a couple of prices. And that's very important. You cannot look at a demand curve and tell us what the price elasticity of demand is for that demand curve. In order to calculate PED, you must look at how the quantity changes in response to a particular change in price. 
So in both these markets, I'm going to start with the price of $3 and determine what the quantity demanded is in that market of $3. And then we're going to change the price and see what happens to PED. So in our market for gasoline, we can see that at a price of $3, 4 million gallons will be demanded. And in the market for Big Macs at a price of $3, 5 Big Macs will be demanded. Sorry, 5,000 Big Macs will be demanded. Let's, let's look at what happens when the price of Big Macs increases to $4. I'm going to raise the price here. So assume ceteris paribus, all else equal. If the price of Big Macs increases, not surprisingly, the quantity demanded of Big Macs decreases. Likewise, when the price of gasoline increases to $4, the quantity demanded of gasoline decreases. This is the simple law of demand. There's an inverse relationship between a goods price and the quantity that consumers demand. So we know that there's an inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded. What PED tells us is how much will quantity demanded fall when price rises by a particular amount. I'm going to use the simple formula and calculate the PED for McDonald's, Big Macs, and gasoline as the price rises from $3 to $4. And then we can compare the responsiveness of consumers of these two goods. So let's start with Big Macs. we we'll use the PED formula here, which is Q2 minus Q1. All right, what's our Q2? Our original quantity was 5. Our new quantity is 3. So I can do 3 minus 5. I'm going to divide that by the original quantity of 5. This is going to give me the percent change in the quantity of Big Macs. Then I'll divide that by the percent change in price. All right, what's P2? P2 is 4, P1 is 3, and we divide that by the original price of 3. Let's do this calculation now. 3 minus 5 is negative 2 divided by 5. So we've got negative 2 divided by 5 on the top here. And on the bottom, we've got 4 minus 3 is 1 divided by 3. We've got 1 third on the bottom. I can simplify this. Negative 2 divided by 5 is negative 0 0.4 and 1 divided by 3 is 0 0.33. Let's take out our calculator and determine what the PED for Big Macs is between 3 and $4. All right, we've got a calculator open. We need to divide 0 0.4, it's negative 0 0.4, by 0 0.33. And that gives us a PED coefficient of negative 1.21. We'll just round it to the nearest hundredth. Negative 1.21. This is our PED for Big Macs. We can't yet interpret that because we don't know what that value means and we want to compare it to another product, specifically gasoline. So let's calculate the PED for gasoline now between $3 and $4. We use the same method that we did for Big Macs. We'll take Q2, that's 3.5, we've got a quantity of 3.5 million gallons per week. We don't need to worry about the millions, so we'll just use 3.5 minus 4, and our original quantity was 4. And we'll divide that by the same percent change in price we determined for Big Macs, because we know the price increasing from 3 to $4 is a 33% increase in price, so we can put 0 0.33 down there. Let's determine what the percent change in quantity is. 3.5 minus 4 gives us negative 0 0.5, and we divide that by 4. We can do that calculation. 0 0.5 negative divided by 4 gives us negative 0 0.125. And we're going to divide all that by 0 0.33. So negative 0 0.125 divided by 0 0.33. We have to do that calculation now to find the PED for gasoline between 3 and $4. 0 0.125 negative divided by 0.33 gives us a PED coefficient of negative 0 0.38. We'll round to the nearest hundredth again. So the PED equals negative 0 0.38. So there's our PED for gasoline between 3 and $4. Here we go.